Hi everyone, uh, it's Mike Monroe here, physiotherapist, and I just wanted to talk a little bit about some resistance exercises that uh, could or should include if you're interested in, you know, strengthening your body um, through yoga, but you want to, you know, bring in something a little extra from uh, resistance training. Now, interestingly, yoga does cover a lot of uh, muscles depending on how you practice it, um, but there are certain reasons why there are a few other exercises that you might need to do resistance-wise to really kind of get a, a well-rounded approach on the body in terms of strength training. So I'm going to share that with you. We're going to do a little PowerPoint presentation. You know, you might be interested in this if you're concerned about things like sarcopenia, healthy aging, um, developing some, some muscles as you get older. Uh, and a lot of people like my age are concerned about that kind of thing. So I picked five resistance exercises to include in um, yoga for a particular reason. I'm going to try to explain that first. So bear with me with a little bit of anatomy. If you look at uh, typical yoga practice, and I'm thinking like a vinyasa practice that includes some standing poses, core, uh, sun salutations, um, standing balance, things like that. And maybe, you know, a well-rounded core program. Um, you know, unless you're doing really acrobatic yoga, like some people will do uh, hang, hanging from silks, um, aerial yoga. If you're doing that kind of thing, this might not apply. But uh, generally speaking, for a kind of well-rounded vinyasa practice, you're going to see a lot of muscle groups working here. So first, we'll look at what's activated in, in your yoga practice. And when I say activated, the muscles contracting against resistance. And because of the nature of arm balance exercises, planks, and things like that. You, you tend to work the forearms um, and the chest, particularly with uh, plank pose and lowering down those sorts of things. Um, you do tend to work the upper body mostly, but you'll notice there's something missing here. What we aren't using, um, this is the first thing on our list to apply, we're not really using the biceps a whole lot because it's a major pulling muscle. So, I'm just kind of drawing in the core here. I'm going to speed this up a little bit. If we go down our <clears throat> diagram, you can see on the back of there, because of plank and low plank, you, you do work the triceps quite nicely. You see, the yogis often have good, strong tr triceps. Uh, the spinal erectors, they really get engaged a lot with a lot of exercises. Um, and pretty much most of the leg muscles get a lot of work in standing poses, but there is one thing that's kind of missing. Uh, we'll look at what's missing it in a minute here now, but you can see if you do a, a thorough standing pose practice, core practice, arm balances, things like that, you are working a, a lot of muscles. Now in blue, I mentioned biceps already. A lot of these muscles that don't get engaged are pulling muscles in the, in the upper body. So um, again, unless you're doing aerial yoga or some kind of uh, you know acrobatic yoga where you're pulling a lot, um, you're going to be missing out on biceps and I just colored in here in the latissimus dorsi muscle down here, major pulling muscle pulling from above. That doesn't get a whole heck of a lot of work in yoga in most cases. And, uh, you know, some people might argue with me here, but the traps, posterior deltoid, rhomboids, they are really major pulling muscles. So um, you may engage them by reaching back and opening up things like that, but to really uh, strengthen them, I think you need to do some additional work there. So we'll move on. After you look at um, traps and rhomboids, the next thing I included was rotator cuff. And this is something that's missing from most programs. It's hard to directly strengthen rotator cuff. Uh, again, unless you're doing something particularly acrobatic. Um, these muscles need a targeted exercise to get at them in most cases. And some of the rotator cuff muscles, which you can't see on this diagram, tend to get weak when there's any kind of shoulder problems. So we're gonna turn at those. So that's, um, that's common in a lot of programs. It's not just, just yoga. Um, so let's move on and we're gonna color in the rotator cuff um, in blue because we wanna activate those a bit more. And last but not least is the inner thigh adductors internal rotator muscles. And not all of them are included here, but you, you get the picture. Basically your adductors and muscles that draw the thigh bones in and rotate in toward each other. Now, they don't get a lot of resistance training in yoga. Um, and in some cases, because there's so much emphasis on hip openers, you know, there's lots of hip opener classes, these will actually get overstretched. And I've seen clinically over the years as physiotherapists, uh, a lot of people need to strengthen these. They're actually in a state of imbalance. So um, basically including some pulling muscles that don't get engaged just because of the nature of what they do. Um, rotator cuff, because I think, uh, you know, anyone who wants to prevent shoulder injuries is working with shoulder injuries needs to uh, work on that in an isolated way. And then 
uh, the adductors and rotators to F5. So those are the ones I picked. And then we'll just do a, a quick look at, this is just a list, but we'll do a quick look at um, what these could look like at home as a home practice. So bicep curls, uh, I'm just demonstrating these here seated with a couple of 10 pound dumbbells. And you can do them, you know, one side at a time. I also demonstrate them both arms because you can you can do it that way as well. So kind of a little more efficient. But we'll just uh, pause that for a second. So bicep curls, and there's a lot of different ways to work these, but one of the simplest ways is just to, uh, you know, sit with good posture and do curl that way. And this is just like an informational series of slides. I'm not spending enough time here to really explain how to do these today, but we are going to include them in a short yoga and resistance training class coming out on FitWith. So look for that on the FitWith app. So lat pull downs, you can do this with TheraBand quite easily. Uh, I've got a rubber band with an Allen wrench in the top of the door. You can hook it around that and, and draw down towards your sides with your elbows. So the lat pull down will get that large back muscle. It's really important for posture and spinal support. Um, a lot of people with back pain will get re relief of symptoms if they strengthen these guys. So lat pull downs. Then moving on to rows. So you can, the cats are fighting in the kitchen. So moving on to rows, uh, I like to use a door with just the doorknobs like this. You can double wrap a TheraBand around there and you just kind of draw your shoulder blades and elbows back and do your seated rows that way. So that'll get those rhomboids and traps. So you can see, you know, these are the pulling, pulling muscles, pulling motions, uh, including that you wouldn't necessarily get otherwise. And here, a rotator cuff, basically you're, you know, rotating your humerus, your arm bone. There's internal rotation on this side. I'm using kind of a double TheraBand here because you, you can use a, lot, a fair amount of resistance for internal rotation or stronger muscles. Um, going to the outside, I'm using half the resistance because they're generally smaller muscles that tend to be weaker and sometimes they're involved in injury. So you want to get that checked out if you're having pain with that. But so generally speaking, a little less resistance is needed for the external rotation. So that's the rotator cuff. The last but not least is our thigh squeeze. So here I'm using just a small exercise ball between the thighs and knees to get adduction and internal rotation. And you can get a fair amount of resistance from a ball like that. So you just give it a good, good squeeze for five seconds or so. And you can add the bridge if you want to get the glutes and thigh muscles involved as well, coordinated with the internal rotators. So that's uh, the last one on our little short list here. So it might not look like a uh, yoga, but you know, I've got a yoga mat here. You just need a little bit of equipment, just like a ball and a TheraBand. Um, and maybe if you have access to a gym, you can just include those in your gym program and then do yoga separately. It's totally up to you how you integrate it. But uh, we'll be coming out with a short video, like a 20 minutes, 25 minute yoga practice, and then includes the resistance training and how to do them properly um, in the next few weeks. We're going to get that out there. So that's just informational for you yogis and yoga teachers and so on. And uh, if you need any help with that, uh, I do offer virtual appointments three times a week. So you can reach out to me. Uh, my email's bottom of the screen, mike at yogastudio.ns.ca. So uh, thanks for your time and enjoy your practice and your training, whatever you're doing.